In this video, I'd like to talk a little bit about robustness and how to create a really nice training set so you can have a self-driving car which picks out the important features uh, in, in its scene and how you can help achieve that. So the simulator is a very unique place because you can have a robot driving your vehicle and you can really give it a, uh, a uniquely strong uh, steering signal, a training signal, that uh, is hard to reproduce when you have a human driver. The PID driver has endless energy to steer exactly uh, in proportion to the way the road is curving, whereas uh, humans tend towards uh, energy minimization and they're quite tolerant for error. So they'll tend to drive straight uh, and then turn as need be. Some drivers are really good at uh, getting the perfect turn, but um, I really feel like uh, this controller gives a very unique opportunity to train, uh, I think, quick faster with less data. But it's still important because uh, variety doesn't come automatically to a simulator. You have to learn how to provide that. So we'll talk a little bit about varying road conditions and lighting. And I'll mention the background, but we've uh, already covered that in a previous video. So for road conditions, you want to understand that if you look over here on the left, you can expand controllers and there's um, a path manager. This path manager, if you check this box, show, build, uh, do show path and then hit play you can see that it will generate some green dots that will show you where the uh, the road gets generated that's actually the first where everything begins is that path generation you can see there's some parameters here one is the distance between each uh, the, each successive node in the path and the total number of nodes in the path. So if you want to create longer runs, you can do that here. And there's also a turn increment. This is an integer value one, but it's actually a floating point value internally. So you can, uh, you can change that. If you want to create a more curvy path, you can change that to 1.5 or two or something like that. And you'll create a road that has, uh, well, let's back out and see if we can. can get an idea what kind of curves this is producing. So that's 1.5. Let's go back to the path manager and set that to 2. Back out to the scene. You can see there is a, uh, a variation. There's a lot of variations, but there's some pretty tight hairpins in, in this track now. So one thing you could do is uh, vary that, the turn increment. And once you get something you like, you can turn on that same random path and then start uh, playing with the seed until you get a path that you like. So that's the, um, the, the turning, the road, the uh, curvature of the road. But you might also want to vary the road surface here. This road surface gets generated dynamically. This world builder object uses these parameters. This is the width of the road. This is the, uh, that's the dimension from this side to the other side. The road height offset, it's the uh, offset from the car. So it's just arbitrarily putting it down pretty close to the, to the road, to the plane. And the offset width means that uh, should it generate this, this center line right down the middle of the path or should I offset it? In this case, it's offsetting it uh, five units to the left. So what we can do is we can vary this 
Uh, and the texture itself is coming from this uh, road prefab object. So one thing we can do is look in our assets prefabs and see that we have some other uh, prefabs here. I'm going to drag this one into this and you can see it's changed the name and I can play. This one, actually that one has the same texture on it so let me let me put a different texture on it. So I'm going to click on this road prefab and see here's the shader that it's using. And then I'm going to go look in textures roads. You can see I've got a number of roads here for you and you can take any road you want. It just kind of needs the um, to be to have this sideways orientation. And let's just use this dirt road here. See something different. So now when we hit play, we're, we've generated uh, the same kind of curvature, but with a different texture. And here we would want to play with the um, offsets. We want to keep that road width. That might be fine. But maybe we want to drive right down the center of this road. So we'll try a zero offset. And you can see that now it's generating a path right down the kind of the middle, the middle of the texture. If you want to, you could play with that offset until you got it right where you wanted. So doing that, you can you could supply um, different road textures and train it on that. The other thing you would want to change is the lighting conditions. In this world, there's a direct light. And I'll go to the scene and I'll double click on it. And you can kind of see that it, it looks like uh, a bunch of rays pointing down diagonally and it's some, there's a really light wireframe ball around it. And if you, you click on that and turn it, you can see that you can uh, change the lighting conditions very easily. You can create kind of sunlight, uh, dusk, and midday conditions. So another thing that would be good to do is vary this from training run to training run. And especially when you uh, you put some trees and some landscape around here, it'll generate shadows across the road and they'll help your, um, your training to uh, essentially ignore that. You want, you want it to just concentrate on the things that are invariant, which are the um, whatever the feature, important road features that it needs to pay attention to, to, to do its job. So the wider variety you give it, the, uh, the more robust it will be. And I hope that's helpful.